Ya ayuhal mu'minul hazirun Yatakullah ta'ala wa tawai innam al-lazina taqwa al-lazina hum muhsinun Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya in mamur salin Sayyidina maulana muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the universes All praises are due to Allah Who is the first, the last, the manifest, the hidden the one who has might and power over all things. All praises are due to Allah who sent Hazrat Nuh, Hazrat Ibrahim, Hazrat Musa, Hazrat Isa and all the other prophets and messengers to bring the children of Adam to guidance. All praises are due to Allah who sent his most beloved Habibullah as the mercy to the universes. And may all peace and blessings be upon the seal of the prophethood the Imam of the Messengers, the Crown of Creation, the Helper of the Helpless, the Intercessor of the Day of Judgment, Sayyidina Muhammad wasalam, and upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun. O believers, welcome to you on this holy day of Juma. Welcome to you on the 15th day of the month of Juma al Awal. Welcome to you as we are only one and a half months away from the door of the month of Allah, the month of Rajab. Welcome to you on a day that is holy in the heavens and in the earth. O believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al Nur, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim He who obeys Allah and His Messenger and fears Allah and keeps His duty, such indeed are the victorious. And He's saying in another ayat, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Obey Allah, obey the Messenger and obey your rightly guided leaders. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also saying in the Holy Quran, Indeed, Allah and His angels send salawat upon the Prophet. O oh, you who believe, send salawat and salutations upon him as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us signs in these ayats. He is sending a message to mankind that we must show proper respect. He is describing those ones who keep their duty, who keep their respect, as the victorious ones. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a protocol showing us how we must show respect to Allah. In order to respect Allah, we must respect the Messenger of Allah. Wasalam, because even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing honor and respect to that Prophet, sending salawats upon him. O oh, believers, in this end of times, people are thinking that they can reach directly to Allah, that their respect is only to Allah. People are thinking that they can respect Allah without respecting the Prophet O oh, believers, know and understand that this type of thinking is only from shaitan. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to shaitan, in order for you to obey me, you must make sajda to Adam salam, and shaitan refused saying, I only show my respect to you. So the ones who are not respecting the Holy Prophet والسلام, understand that they are the inheritors of shaitan. And even those who are claiming to love, claiming to show respect to Holy Prophet والسلام, in these days, they are defining respect according to their own understanding. They are showing respect according to their own thinking. They think that respect is just to make a big show in the name of the Prophet, to organize conferences, to cry during speeches, to dance during nasheeds in his honor. But how do we learn what is true respect to the Holy Prophet ﷺ? It is simple. It is through the lifestyle of the ones who had the most respect for him, the Sahabi Kiram, the companions of the Prophet. Through the lifestyle of those ones who were described by a diplomat visiting the Prophet ﷺ, who said about the Sahabis, O oh people, by Allah, I have been to the kings and to Caesar, Khusro and Anajashi, yet 
I have never seen any of them respected by his companions as much as Muhammad is respected by his Sahabi. By Allah, if he spat, the spittle would fall into one of their hands, who would rub it on his face and skin. If he ordered them, they would carry out his order immediately. If he performed ablution, they would struggle to take the remaining water. And when he spoke, they would lower their voices and would not look at his face constantly out of respect. What is respect? It is to live and die for the order of the one you are respecting. Respect is to live your life for the sake of your master at his command. Respect is to die for the sake of your master. Just like the Siddiq al-Akbar, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, the master of all the friends of Allah, who was once sitting, and he was just looking at the face of the Rasulullah And he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, do you know that if you ask me, if you give me an order, I would kill myself in this very instant. And the Holy Prophet والسلام, smiled and said, Yes, Ya Abu Bakr, I know that. And I'm happy and proud of you because of that. But today's people would look at that hadith, at that incident, and the majority would not understand it. The majority would say, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq is crazy. Astaghfirullah. The majority would say that that is too extreme. You must die only for Allah, not for the Prophet. That kind of respect, it doesn't pay attention to what other people think. That real respect, it does not pay attention to the whisperings of shaitan and the temptations of the ego. It only looks at the master and what he wants. And with that type of respect, a person is going to have true faith. That respect is what the Holy Prophet والسلام, is describing in his Hadith Sharif saying, None of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his father, his child, and all his people. And our Shaykh, may Allah raise his station. Sahib al Saif is making it simple for us, saying, What is faith? The reality is that you can enter to the faith just by saying Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Shahadat is giving value to you. Why it's giving value to you? Because you are accepting the most valuable one in divine presence. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning his name alongside his name. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. So if you are keeping what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept valuable, high, that is your faith. That is faith. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put high, you must put high. You must accept it. You must put it above your head. You must bow down front of that one. Yes, that time you have faith. Your faith is valuable because you are putting high what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put high. And what is kufr? What is unbelief? What Allah is putting down, if you are putting it up, that is kufr. That faith, the faith is what Allah is keeping high. You must keep it high too. That is faith. And when a person shows this kind of respect, when a person has this kind of faith, the help of Allah reaches to them. Amazing things happen to them. Just like one time after a battle, Holy Prophet والسلام, was resting his head on the leg of Hazrat Ali. And Holy Prophet والسلام, kept his head there for so long that the time for Asr passed. And the time for Maghrib entered. And out of respect and adab for Holy Prophet ﷺ, Hazrat Ali did not move. He did not say anything. 
Nowadays, people will say, oh, he committed a sin. Hasha, astaghfirullah. That he missed Asr prayer. But these 21st century people have completely lost their manners, lost their faith, lost their adab, because they lost the understanding of what it is to have respect. And so once the sun had set, the Holy Prophet ﷺ raised his head and smiled. And he made a dua saying, Ya Allah, indeed Ali was obeying you and your Prophet. Make the sun come back so that he may perform his Asr Salah in its correct time. And another Sahabi he was witness said, I saw with my own eyes that the sun reappeared with the peaks of mountains and ground becoming bright with its rays. This hadith has a huge lesson. Obedience to Allah is to obey his representative. It is to serve the one representing Allah. Hazrat Ali Karmallah Washa, he missed his Asr Namaz. He missed his Fars to make service to make hizmat to the Holy Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because the respect, the duty, the farce to the living representative, it is the highest. This chain of respect, this protocol, it has another link after the Holy Prophet ﷺ. That respect reaches to his inheritors. That respect reaches to the friends of Allah. That respect reaches to the rightly guided leaders because Holy Prophet is saying in a hadith recorded in Buhari and Muslim, whoever obeyed me, he would have obeyed Allah. And whoever disobeyed me, he would have disobeyed Allah. And whoever obeyed the rightly guided leader who would have obeyed me, and whoever disobeyed the rightly guided leader, he would have disobeyed me. We are calling ourselves murids. We have our sheikh, a rightly guided leader in front of us. We have an inheritor of the Holy Prophet ﷺ in front of us. We have one of the greatest friends of Allah in front of us. What kind of respect are we showing to him? What kind of respect are we showing to him? What kind of respect are we showing to his words, to his orders? That is showing your respect, that is showing your love, and that is the test of your faith. And that is the value of your faith. Are we valuing namaz? Are we valuing the holiness of the namaz and coming to namaz, coming to prayers on time? Are we respecting the holy day of Juma to be ready, to be eager, to be there to collect the blessings, what is for you? Are we giving value to the sohbat, the association that our tariqat is based on? That without the sohbat, without the association, you don't have tariqat. Are we giving value to the zikr? To the remembrance of Allah? Or are we getting spoiled that one day, maybe the salat, the namaz, the sohbat and the zikr will be taken away from us? As murids, we are getting very spoiled. But we still remember, as our Shaykh, Qas Sahib al Saif, Qadrasallah Sir, is saying, when he had come back from his visit to China, I swear, he said, when I looked at all the adab and the faith and the strength of those ones who have nothing of this dunya. I would exchange any day them for my murids. 
These are his words. We are his legacy. How are we holding that up? If we lose the respect of our Shaykh's orders, we lose the respect of our Shaykh, and we will lose the respect of our Prophet Because the Prophet is saying the Shaykh in his Jama'at is like a Prophet amongst his nation. Do not lose the respect. Don't lose the adab. Wake up and keep your duty because only the ones who are keeping their duty are going to be successful and victorious in this life and in the next. Otherwise, you may do so many things, but you're only sabotaging yourself. What is supposed to be given to you, it will not be. Because the respect, it is lacking. As our Shaykh is saying, there is nothing we can offer to our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing. But He looks at our intentions. He looks at who we are showing respect to. Are we showing the proper respect to the most beloved one in the divine presence whom Allah loves? If we are showing proper respect to that one, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easier for us. If we are showing respect to the Salihin, to the righteous people who are in the way of the Prophet, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is reaching to us. Showing respect to them is not just to go saying, I like this man, or when you see them, to kiss their hand. No, that is only a sign. That is only a sign of respect. To be showing respect, we must take what they are giving to us, apply them to our lives and correct our lives. That is proper respect. If you are running to love and saying you love, but you are not applying anything that they are giving into your life, that is not respect. Otherwise, when you see the shaykh, you are running to kiss the hand and later when you go outside, you run after your ego 24 hours a day. That's not respect. So we must, inshallah, Rahman, make correct intention for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easier for us. Murids of Sahib al Saif, don't forget, this is for me and for you. Our Shaykh is an Ottoman, and we are making intention to be from those grandchildren of the Ottomans who will bring the empire back. How did that Ottoman empire, that Dawlat al Aliyah, begin? With the respect that Hazrat Osman Ghazi Qadazasir showed to his Shaykh, Shaykh Edab Ali, and to the Holy Quran. And that's when Hazrat Osman Ghazi visited Shaykh Adabali's dergah. He was put in a room with the Holy Quran in the room. And out of respect for that Holy Quran, Hazrat Osman Ghazi did not sleep. He stood in respect for the words of Allah the whole night. And that night he had a dream. And he told that dream to his Shaykh, saying, Oh my Shaykh, I saw you in my dream. A moon appeared in your chest. It rose, it rose, and then it descended into my chest. From my navel there sprang a tree. It grew up and turned green. It branched out and became more and more spread out. The shadow of its branches covered the whole world. What does my dream mean? And Shaykh Adab Ali became silent for a moment and said, I have good news, Osman. Allah gave you power to you and to your sons. All the world will be under the protection of your sons. And my daughter will be your wife. And that protection was reaching to the whole world because of that respect. In his last will to his son, Hazrat Osman Ghazi said to his son and to all the Ottoman sultans, he said, follow my way and protect Dini Muhammadi and the believers and also your followers. Respect the right of Allah and his servants. Do not hesitate to advise your successors in this way. And for over 800 years, these orders were followed, and with that respect, the Ottomans, they were the highest. As our Grand Shaykh is saying, Allah Almighty granted to the Ottoman Sultans such honor and power because through so many Sultans, they never reached respect as they reached. And just a few days ago, 
we passed. The 81st year since that Hilafat was veiled from this world. And since that day, when the last Ottoman Khalifa stopped sitting physically on the throne, this world has been thrown into chaos. And there has been no respect. The time is here. The time is soon. The time is very soon for the Khalifa to sit on that throne again. Keep your duty. Keep your respect. Inshallah, that time will be counted as the ones who are going to be with him. We must keep our respect and our sincerity. That time, no matter what our numbers, our size, the help of Allah, the help of the Prophet, and the help of the friends of Allah will be with us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, how often by Allah's will has a small force vanquished a huge one? Allah is with those who steadfastly persevere. We're asking our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us to be part of that small force that will help to be part of the return of the Ottomans under the flag and obedience of our Shaykh, Sahib al-Sayf, Shaykh al-Kirbisiya Rabbani. Amen.